Oh, hey there, wet shavers. Welcome again to the Shaving Tolson channel. This is your host, Tim, bringing you guys my top three favorite soaps for 2018. Now, this video has been long coming. I keep intending to push it out. I keep saying in my live streams, oh, hey, guys, I'm going to submit it today. Oh, no, guys, I'm going to go ahead and do it today. Well, now is the time. I will finally be unveiling my top three... <laughs> Kaboom. <laughs> what are you doing in this picture, you, you silly fool? Anyway, I digress. Sorry we were interrupted by Kaboom there, but I do have my top three favorite soaps. Now, I will be releasing these videos in part of a series, so this is going to be the first part of that series dealing with my top three favorite soaps. So please stay tuned as we go ahead and reveal my top so soaps for 2018. Alright guys, so I'm not going to mince words, we're going to go ahead and get right into it. Now, with the original statement that I made at the intro to this video, I said that I'm going to be showcasing my top three favorite soaps. That is partially true. What I'm actually going to be talking about are my three favorite soap performers. So these were the best performers that I had over the course of 2018. These are not necessarily the soaps that I utilize all the time. I have a ridiculous number of soaps that I utilized throughout 2018 and the beginning of 2019, but these are definitely the top performers in this category. And these are the best ones that I utilized this year. I had tons of samples from various artisans. I had some great products to work with. So please don't necessarily take everything that I have to say as the ultimate word or the final word on the process because that's not necessarily the case. I am not an expert by any means. I am an amateur wet shaver at best, but I do know what scents I love, what performances I look for out of soaps. I've tried enough to know these are the things that just perform well for my face, so your miles may vary, but I am real excited to see what you guys think. So starting out with number three, no surprise to anybody, this would be in my top three performing soaps. CK6 Doppelganger Red Label by Phoenix Artisan Accoutrements, the one and only. Now, I don't know what they're doing over at Phoenix Shaving. I don't know what Doug's cooking up for his next big unveil. If there is one, there always is one, I feel like. But this was incredible. I remember the hype was unreal around this. He's usually very good at really... Um, wrapping you into whatever products it is that he's going to be releasing and this was no slouch in that area I was real excited for Doppelganger to come out now I will admit when Doppelganger was released I was apprehensive because of the price I was very skeptical because I was like alright it's, it's 10 bucks more than the base soap is, is it really worth that much is, is all the hype real well, luckily, I had a local friend that hooked me up with a sample of CK6, and I can assure you that this soap stands on its own as a fantastic alternative to tallow, but the best performing vegan base on the market guaranteed best vegan based soap. This can outperform tallow often. Doesn't necessarily mean it outperforms all tallow, as we're going to be seeing here in a minute, but this is a wonderful soap with great residual slickness. This sucker holds water. It requires a lot of water, so don't be afraid to add water to your CK6 formula based soap, but once you add the right amount of water, and don't be afraid to add a lot because it'll take it, this sucker will perform. This thing is wonderful. It's beautifully slick. It's extremely smooth and luxurious. You feel it moisturizing your face because, again, this is a thirsty soap. So when you're adding a lot of water, the ingredients in this allow it to withhold and hold in all that water. It doesn't dissipate or fall apart like you might see from some of your tallow-based soaps. It retains all that water and it applies it to your face. So you are getting an almost unmatched moisturized face with this particular soap alone. Not even talking about adding witch hazel or your aftershave balms or splashes. This really gives you that moisturization that you really want out of a soap. And you don't even technically need an aftershave after you're done with it because it is that good. It tones, it feels fantastic, it's a beautifully scented soap. I personally started off the hobby with Brute. So Sartorial by Penn Halligans smells a lot like Brute. This pairs beautifully with it. So if you do have Brute lying around, which 
more wet shavers, who doesn't have brute lying around, then you can pair it beautifully with this soap. And if you're someone that likes brute, but you'll want something a little bit stronger, but you don't want to shekel out the money for maybe the original stuff, which technically doesn't isn't significantly that stronger than today's modern brute, then go ahead and throw down some money on either the aftershave cologne for this or Pin, uh, Sartorial by Pin Halligans because you're going to be getting a wonderfully scented cologne, which this is an homage to, and you're going to be getting that wonderful scent profile. So I highly encourage you to take a look at this. I feel like 2018 was the great year for cologne perfume homages. There were so many that came out, so many wonderful performers and great scent profiles, but really when we're talking about overall soap performance, this was in my top three soap performers. So let us go ahead and move on without hesitation <laughs> to number two. Number two is no slouch. Number two was a very big surprise for me in 2018 because it came at the tail end of 2018. So this was like a very early Christmas present that was very unexpected and my friend the same friend that hooked me up with a sample of the CK6 formula base also hooked me up with a very big surprise with Australian private reserve now I will say that though this isn't the particular soap that's my favorite scent of theirs it's actually Finchurch that is on its way as far as the full size I still have some of the sample left I recently received Velos Noir from a fellow friend on Instagram Super thankful. Thank you, sir, for selling me this. I absolutely love the scent profile of it. I also got a matching aftershave at an incredible price because that is one thing I will say about Australian Private Reserve. It, it is a little pricey. Now, don't be afraid of the price because what you are getting is matched performance to that price point. You are getting almost unparalleled performance. This could easily be someone's number one. It could easily be my number one if the number one that I show you didn't have some of the attributes that really get it to that top notch. But the performance on this is spectacular. Out of all the soaps that I've ever smelled, from all the various artisans, Australian Private Reserve is absolutely incredible with their perfuming process, with adding complexities to their soap scents and um, being able to combine that with their aftershave splashes to really match and to, to not deviate. You're just, you're adding on that extra layer of perfuming with the aftershave splash. So that's going to last you for, a, you know, throughout the day, you're going to be getting that performance. And this soap is no slouch. You're getting a beautifully thick, dense, yogurt-like consistency, um, very similar to my number one, where the scent really stands out. And the scents on these are super unique. I mean, they're not like anything else that you're smelling out on the market. They're very unique, very particular to Australian Private Reserve, and it's why they get my number two spot. They are very innovative, even with the marketing, with the way that they market their products. Look at the presentation here. Presentation for me is part of the battle when we're looking at soaps. So I don't just look at, oh, you know, okay, well, it's got sandalwood in it, I'm, I'm sold, you know. Um, I really look at, of course, ingredients. I look to see what the public's saying about the performance of it, if it's just hype from specific, you know, wet shaver reviewers, or if it's legitimately a great performer. Um, of course, scent is extremely important to me. I tend to lean on the side of I love stronger scented soaps. I don't want them to be afraid of just, you know, smacking me in the face with a wonderful scent and remaining there. I'm not one to like subtle scents. I like something that's really strong and pervasive throughout the day. I feel like APR blends that perfectly. It's not gonna slap you around in the face and make you wish you hadn't done it. Um, it's one of those that just, it really smells incredible throughout the day in a very subtle way, but it's one that if anybody's close to you, they're gonna be able to smell it. And they're just so unique. The way that they go about perfuming, I don't know what it is they're doing over there, but they're doing a fantastic job plus the fact that they make these wonderful bases and this wonderful presentation. I mean, just look at that mug, look at that jar. It's absolutely beautiful. Very 80s retro look, um, which I love. Looks great next to my little model DeLorean. Can't complain, shave of the day picks what? But anyway, we're gonna get on to my number one. My number one performing soap base, Ariana and Nevins. No surprise to probably anybody that follows me on Instagram because I constantly tout this as my absolute favorite of all my soaps. Um, and the funny thing was, is I started out dying to have this because of the label. 
Now, I'm a sucker for Last Samurai. I love the symbolism in that movie. I love the performances in that movie. I think it is a wonderfully beautiful film, uh, very well directed, and um, the cinematography in it is gorgeous. And there's a lot of symbolism around the cherry blossom. I've always loved the cherry blossom. It's, um, it's symbolism in Japanese um, mythos and lore, and it's just one of those things that it looks beautiful and you're shaped in. I mean, it looks gorgeous. Tell me you don't see that in your life. That's not an, a work of art right there. I saw so many people posting shave of the day pictures with these jars with the app matching aftershave, and I was like, I've got to have it just based on the label alone. And the Asian plum, I bet you it's very oriental. I bet you it smells fantastic. I like complex oriental scents. I tend to let, uh, direct myself more to spicy scents, but I also dabble a lot of citrus. So I was really excited to try this, and it did not disappoint at all. Just right off the puck, you're getting a very, you're, you're definitely getting the plum. You're getting some sweetness, but not artificial sweetness there. Um, you're getting this incense, oriental, like mysterious type complex scent um, that's just beautiful. It's like if you have burning incense in your house and um, you just, oh, it, it's difficult to describe, to say the least, but it is one that I highly recommend. If you're someone that just loves a beautiful soap to sit in your shaved in and look gorgeous to those that are coming in, it's a great conversational piece because it looks gorgeous, um, but it is a wonderful performer. It's the best performer out of all of my soaps. It consistently gets a thick, dense, beautiful lather. It's not an overly thirsty soap, but I do say it lends a little bit on the, it wants a little bit more water side, but it's not typically that thirsty of a soap. Not as much as APR in my opinion, definitely not as much as the ZK6 by PAA. It is very consistent. And coming from my job background where I do look for consistency across the board, um, I like consistent performers. And A&E is no slouch. It will get you this beautiful glide, this beautiful scent every single time. I have Summer Fig, I have Asian Plum, I have... Um, Monte Carlo and their various scent profiles. They are all gorgeous, they're all beautiful, and they're very strong. Like I said, I tend to love stronger scents. I've not found anybody in the soap bases that matches Ariana and Evans in strength of scent. APR is extremely close, is extremely close to the longevity and the strength profile of their scents, but they don't quite match it, and especially when you pair this with the aftershave, that beautiful, milky, skin food of an aftershave you are going to be smelling it all throughout the day I constantly get compliments when I use this stuff at work um, it's just a great soap and it leaves your face feeling moisturized and healthy after the shave which is what we're all really after we want that shave that's going to help us get a more efficient close shave but that's not going to cause any irritation skin burn anything like that uh, this does not do any of that whatsoever oh I also have Spartacus speaking of um, Ariana and Evans, so I forget, I have several of their soaps. Spartacus is also another great one that I highly recommend, but Asian Plum by Ariana and Evans gets my number one slot for 2018 Best Performers. And really, out of my soaps, I would say this is my number one period. Performance and scent-wise, it's unique, it's beautiful. I really like unique scents. I like things that kind of put their own spin on a particular thing and, and this is just gorgeous. I do know that this is an homage to a very rare um, cologne I believe. Um, I've never smelled it, probably never will in my lifetime, but it is wonderful. Now I did want to do one honorable mention. You saw Kaboom kind of sneaking out of the corners of the frame, but whoo, I could smell this all day y'all. It is spicy, it is masculine, it is unabashedly incredible. Sterling has knocked it out of the park with Kaboom. I do know that there was a little bit of difficulty and some problems in the label name because it was the same as I believe Oleo Soapworks had also done um, a similar scented homage to Victor and Rolf Spice Bomb, which is this is an homage to, and they also labeled it the same name. But the cool thing was, is there was an am amicable resolution to the whole thing. Sterling's awesome about just their, their customer service and the way that they present themselves is incredible. 
I own more sterling soaps and aftershaves than any other artisan out there. And there's a reason for that. The price point is right. The quality is incredible. Their scent profiles are varied and great. If there's a scent that you want, chances are Sterling's got it. And they've got it in deodorant, aftershave balm, aftershave splash, beard oil, shampoo, body soap. They've, they've most likely got it. Now this was a limited release and the price on this was incredible. Um, but I've talked to Rod over at Sterling and there is hopefully talk that he'll be bringing this back, although it would be under a different name. Uh, there might be some formulation changes, I don't know, but I have begged him to bring this back, to make this a regular offering, because I would love to see this in an EDT form. Of course, I can go down the street to Ulta Beauty and I can buy myself Victor and Rolf Spice Bomb, which I intend to do. But, you know, that's the funny thing with wet shaving, is the majority of the scent profiles that I've discovered, I've found that the, my favorite scents have actually been homages to popular colognes. Like, one of my favorite all-time scents that didn't make the list because Kaboom came out here, and I was originally going to give that an honorable mention, was Sterling Sandpiper, which is an homage to YSL La Nuit de l'Homme. And I had no idea that that was a cologne until I found Sandpiper. I was like, man, is there something that could go really well with this as an EDT? Now, they've since released EDTs, um, but if you really want something that's extremely, as far as the longevity of the scent, um, I actually go with YSL La Nuit de l'Homme, although Sterling EDTs are significantly cheaper than what you're going to be looking at as far as like Ulta Beauty or just buying the products online as far as the colognes, the name colognes. But I have discovered so many colognes, like the Victor and Rolf Spice Bomb I didn't discover until I tried this. And then I found out it was an homage to a cologne, so I went out and I smelled the cologne, and it smells dead on like that cologne. And I'm I'm hooked. Sterling, you got me. I'm gonna say, big surprise that you got me. You guys see purchases from me all the time, so, you know. But all of these artisans have been really pulling their weight this year. All three of these, these are my top performers by far. You could honestly interdisperse these um, as far as which one is my top number one, number two, because they're all great performers. They all do something unique. Best vegan base often outperforms a lot of tallow. One of the best up and coming artisans on the market. They're really establishing a name for themselves as a wonderful perfumer, um, a wonderful blender of scents, and incorporating that into a almost perfect base but that base is only slightly beaten out by Ariana and Evans. Peter over there is doing an incredible job. Whatever you keep doing, Peter, keep doing it. <laughs> I, I'm still waiting on that EDP, man. I am still waiting on this EDP. Like I said, it's my favorite scent of the year. Uh, well, it's my favorite scented soap of the year. So I've got the matching aftershave. I want the matching EDP. So please put that up because I would love to buy that and maybe pick up some more soaps while I'm at it. I'm just waiting to pick up some soaps until the EDP gets posted. But guys, I hope you love the video. You know I love your support. The wet shaving community is one of the most supportive communities out there, bar none. You guys are incredible. I wouldn't be the person I am today with a lot of the wet shaving products that I've been able to try without your support, without your generosity, without some of the samples that a lot of you guys have sent me that have really introduced me to some really interesting scent profiles and products. I wouldn't have the following that I do. I wouldn't be able to test out a different soap each day. And I wouldn't have the exposure to some of the artisans that I do or be willing to try those um, on my own. So thank you so much for all that you've done. 2018 was a phenomenal year for me in wet shaving. What a journey. And I'm constantly discovering more things. And that's the thing you need to keep in mind with this is these are just my opinions. You don't take what I say to the bank. Don't take it to be the final word for the best of 2018. Just know that I was very pleased with 2018 and I was pleased with what these artisans were putting out because they don't just rest on their laurels. All of these have great reputations, but they're not just resting on their laurels. They're not just sitting there and being content with their current formulations. They're trying to, to continually seek um, new ways to come about the wet shaving community with new products and new formulations that just make it even better because they're wet shavers too they want to get the best products so they can come up with the best formulation that's what they're going to do and each one of these is just their involvement on social networking the ease of access to actually speak 
with the owners, the creators is so simple and so easy. I would love to do an interview with each one of you for my Instagram page and post those here on YouTube for everyone to see. Each one of you is fantastic and I really respect and I look up to each one of you. Thank you so much. I hope all of you guys on the Wet Shaving channel for uh, this page have a wonderful evening. Thank you so much for stopping by. If you'll please hit that like button, the subscribe button down below. I will post a link to each of these three um, top three soaps in the description box below. But feel free to follow me on Instagram. I'll also include that in the description box. I'm always posting typically twice a day on there. They kind of call me Timmy Two Shaves on Instagram now, Reyes. Looking at you, buddy. But you guys have a good night. Thank you so much. And sorry it took me so long to post this content.